Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be using colour pencils and I'm going to be running through five really quick tips for things you can try to improve your drawings. So let's get straight into it with tip number one. And this is how important it is to make sure that all of your colour pencils are really sharp. So here I'm using a blunt pencil but it's not so blunt that it's obvious that you need to sharpen it. But you can see that even though it's not completely blunt, it's still leaving a lot of the white grain of the paper showing through. And it also looks quite patchy, which isn't something that you want. You want to be able to fill in all the little white crevices and all the nooks and crannies of the paper. So that's why it's really important to make sure you have a sharp pencil. So I've sharpened the pencil and now I'm going to try again. And you'll see very quickly the big difference that there is just by sharpening your pencil. Another thing is that instead of doing back and forth motions, try to work in circular motions that overlap. This will really make sure that you're getting into all of the crevices of the paper from loads of different angles. And you can see that instantly we have got less of the white grain showing through. Another thing that you can notice is that it looks a lot darker than the blunt version. And that is just because we are filling in more of the white grain so there's less blank space which means that it's appearing darker and richer and more pigmented. So make sure you work in circular motions and always keep your pencils really really sharp. So making sure that you have a sharp pencil will make your drawings really smooth, it will help you to make nice easy transitions between colours and it will just give you a much smoother finish and it will look less patchy and it will just look a lot better. Okay so straight on to tip number two and this is all about layering and the importance of layering if you want your drawings to look three dimensional or realistic. So here I'm just giving an example of layering some colours. So I'm starting off with a light peach and then I will add a bit of white for the highlighted end and a bit more of a darker peach and brown for the shadows. And this is just to really show that if you just use one colour then your drawings will look quite flat and two dimensional. But using a few different colours, a shadowed colour and a highlighted colour as well as just your mid-tone colour, it will really help bring your drawings to that next level make them look a bit more three-dimensional and more realistic. And here you can see how I use that technique in more of a portrait. So here I'm drawing Hermione and you can see that I'm using so many colours to build up her hair. If I just use one colour it would look very very flat and it wouldn't have much motion to it and you wouldn't be able to see the highlights or the shadows. So it's really important that you use lots of different colours, not only to add a nice tone and richness, but also to make it look three dimensional and to make it pop as well. And this will take a bit longer to do, but make sure that you don't rush it. There's no rush, just take your time and build up those layers. Also, when you're building up layers, make sure that you don't apply much pressure because if you apply a lot of pressure to your first layer, then it will be very hard to apply layers on top. So just work very slowly with very light pressure just so that you can maintain and not damage that tooth of the paper. So if you're interested, I've been using the Faber-Castell Polychromos so far and a few of the Prismacolor pencils as well. I'll leave all of the materials that I've mentioned and will talk about and are using in the video in the description below if you want to check them out. But you can just really see how much I'm switching between different colours. I'm never using one colour for particularly a long time. I just keep switching it up and adding lots of tone with different colours. So here I'm doing the same thing but with a mouth and at the moment it looks okay but it doesn't really pop out and it looks kind of flat and a bit dull. So you can see that I add a few extra colours on top and it gives it much more of a healthy glow. It makes it look more three dimensional and it just makes it look a bit more healthy and just a bit more plump. 
And that's why it's really important to look at your reference photo and as well as seeing the basic colors, see if there's any like cast hues over the top. So she had a bit of reddish tint to her lips and just try and tint some colors in there. So glaze some layers over the top. Okay, so tip number three is about burnishing and solvent. And a lot of you guys have asked, well, when should I burnish and when should I use solvent? And I have got a much more in-depth video just about this topic on my channel as well, and I'll link that up above so you can check that out. But here's just a quick little insight to it. So solvent is when you have to add the pigment to the paper. You don't have to be as specific and you don't need to add as much because when you blend out using the solvent, it does a really good job of smoothing it out for you. So you don't have to apply a lot of pressure to the pencil. And this is really good if you don't like applying pressure to the pencil. And if you want to do lots of layers and build up texture because it doesn't damage the tooth of the paper. So burnishing is when you just apply a lot of pressure to that pencil, burnish it into all of those white crevices of the paper and flatten them out. But the problem with this is that it's very hard to add layers over the top. So with this white pencil, you can see that it goes over the solvented area so much better and it shows up better than it does on the burnishing side. And that's just because when you're using the solvent, you're not damaging the tooth of the paper so it can still have additional layers on top. And so I love using the solvent technique when I'm doing animals or fur or something where I need to build up detail and build up layers gradually. Whereas I like the burnishing technique for things like portraits where I want really smooth skin and stuff like that. So here is just a quick rundown of when I would use each type of blending method. So like I said, I like to use burnishing for anything that I want to get really smooth. So I like to use it for portraits and skin. And I also like to use it for cartoons because these tend to have quite flat areas of colour and just block colours. So I like this method for cartoons. In particular, I like using it with the luminance and Prismacolor pencils because they are really, really creamy. So they're really easy to burnish. So next with the solvent, I really like using this again for animal drawings, anything where I need to build up texture or draw fur, anything that has a high level of detail and anything that basically I don't need to be too smooth. I need to apply a lot of layers and stuff like that. You can use it for portraits if you want to, but it is a bit harder to get the hang of. But again, you can get beautiful results for doing it with portraits, but you just need to spend a bit more time learning how to layer with it. So tip number four is all about soft shading. So what I mean about that is particularly for realistic drawing, you don't want to have any harsh lines. So whenever I do my color pencil layering, I make sure that there's really soft transitions between certain areas. So when I'm doing a portrait, I'm doing her nose at the moment, I'll make sure that when I'm applying the different colors, that they overlap so it's very soft shading that there's no harsh edges and no blocks of color and it is important and hard to do but if you just keep practicing then it will be something that will come with practice and come with time and it is very hard to understand and figure out when you need to apply certain colors and when you need to transition out of the colors but you will get the hang of it so tip number five is that I like to block in the darkest areas first. So whatever I'm drawing, I like to first set down all the darkest outlines because I find that once I've got the darkest values in, it's much easier to determine all the other values that I need to put in because I've already got the darkest areas in. So with animals and anything that's more wildlife based, I would like to use the black first. But when I'm doing portraits, a lot of portraits you don't really have a lot of black in it's more softer browns so I like to use dark browns and maybe black for the pupils but predominantly I like to use browns for portraits but again I still like to block out the darkest areas and I'll do this with most of my portraits most of my wildlife studies just because I find it easier this is not something that will work for everyone but for me, it's something that I really like to do and I recommend that you give it a go just in case it works for you too. So now I've just got a few quick bonus tips and that is firstly, 
always try and use a reference photo. If you can use one, then really, really try and use one. Try to use one that's not copyrighted. So there's lots of free websites out there that do royalty free reference photos for artists that you can use. And if you just Google search royalty free like reference photos, a lot of them should come up. And it's really easy to draw from like a reference photo and from real life studies than trying to imagine everything. Especially with realism, it's hard to imagine, say for example, this ear, what all the little angles and that would be like. So make sure you try and use a reference photo. It just makes your life easier. Last bonus tip is about how to create a natural black. So a lot of artists really don't like using black in their artwork. And so here's a quick tip on how you can make more of a natural black without using black at all. So if you ever want to create black, you can make it with a dark brown color and also a dark blue and an indigo blue. And the different hues that you use will give you different types of black. So here it's more of like a greenish, warmish black but if you try different hues then you will get different results anyway guys that's it for today's video i hope you guys enjoyed it and learned something new if you did make sure you hit that subscribe button for future tutorials and all that sort of stuff thank you guys so much for watching and i will see you in my next video bye